got down deeper and deeper and deeper. Finally, they hit the airplane, melted a big hole, and took the airplane apart and brought the pieces up through the hole, took them all back to Middleborough, Kentucky, and put it together. It finally flew in the fall of 2002, I believe, was the first time it flew again. The P-38 from World War II. I talked to the guy who dug out the airplane. His name is Bob Carden. I said, now, Bob, that airplane was in the ground for 48 years. It was 263 feet down. That's five and a half feet a year. The deepest hole the guy's ever drilled looking for ice cores is uh, 10,000 feet. You divide that by five and a half, you get 1,800 years. Hmm, what happened to the 135,000? Now, I know deeper layers get squished. They turn to glacial fern, okay? So really 44, like the Bible says, 4,400 years, that's plenty of time to account for the ice. So I went and met Bob, talked to him. There's his phone number if you don't believe me. I said, Bob, you dug the airplane out, is that right? He said, yes, sir. There was a crew of us, but I was on that crew. I said, Bob, when you melted down to get to the airplane, did you melt through ice rings? He said, oh, yeah, there were many hundreds of them. I said, wait a minute. How do you get hundreds of annual rings in 48 years? Looks to me like there should be 48 of them. He said, oh, no, there were hundreds. See, those aren't annual rings, folks. Those rings represent, they don't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one day around here, can't you? <laughs> yeah. But here's a guy from Scientific American, still calling them annual rings. Now, either he's ignorant or he's a liar. I hope he's just ignorant, because ignorance can be fixed. Stupid is forever. By the way, that's the difference. Uh, here's a guy from Alaska wrote me a letter. said, Brother Hovind, I work with the Eskimos up here. He said, I got 15 layers of snow on my car in eight hours. Not 15 inches, 15 distinct layers of snow. Eskimos have over 40 words for snow. What else is there to talk about? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> the kids are taught in school that each of the layers of the earth is a different age. This is pure baloney. Those layers all formed in the flood in the days of Noah. All over the world, petrified trees are found standing up, connecting those layers. There's a bunch of pictures on our website, drdino.com. Go there and check out the article about petrified polystrata fossils. It does not take long for things to petrify. Things can petrify quickly. Um, Mount St. Helens blew trees into Spirit Lake. Many are already beginning to petrify in 20 years. Here's a piece of petrified firewood. Here's a petrified dog found inside a tree when they cut it down for firewood in Georgia. They said, wait a minute, don't cut that tree up. There's a dog inside. Petrified, turned to stone. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. Doesn't take millions of years to give birth. Petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. Articles on the table down here called the Limestone Cowboy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we cover lots more on rapid petrification on video number six. Uh, the Mississippi River, I did a debate the other night in, in Mississippi, so they call it Mississippi. The Mississippi River is depositing sediments at the rate of 80,000 tons every hour. 80,000 tons of mud per hour go down the Mississippi and dump off in New Orleans. That delta is growing larger and larger and larger. Well, they've studied the delta pretty carefully. They say it probably took about 30,000 years to put all that mud out there. Okay, well then I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why isn't the whole Gulf of Mexico full of mud by now? Hmm? They're going to say, hey, it's 30,000. The Bible says 6,000. That proves the Bible's wrong. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, it doesn't. Hmm. I got a theory about that delta. Here's my theory. I believe... About 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. As the flood water was running off, whoosh, about half of that mud washed out in 20 minutes. So it looks like it took 30,000 years. They forgot the flood. A friend of mine from Louisiana said, Brother Hovind, I was working in the oil field before I pastored to church. And he said, I used to go out in the Gulf of Mexico and drill holes looking for oil. He said, we drilled through 14,000 feet of mud and hit trees 60 feet tall. The flood runoff formed most of the erosion out in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a picture of the oldest tree in the world. The oldest tree in the world is a bristlecone pine. It's 4,300 years old, according to this textbook. Earth's oldest organism. Now, some people say, oh, no, we counted one and it's 4,600 years old. Well, trees do not always produce one ring a year. It's very common for them to produce two rings a year. Okay, so tree ring dating is not an exact science. We cover that later on in seminar on the college class 101. Go into much more detail on that. But uh, 4,300 years old, oldest living tree. That's interesting. 
If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have an older tree someplace? Why is the oldest tree 4,300 years old? Well, I have a theory about that. Here's my theory. I believe about 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. Destroyed everything. So the oldest tree ought to be around 4,400 years old. Unless, of course, one floated for a few years in the for a few months in the flood and rerouted. That's possible, I suppose. So I don't have a problem with the oldest tree, folks. If it's the Bible theory, perfectly. This is a picture of a coral reef. You know, the largest reef in the world is in Australia. It's called the Great Barrier Reef. I had a call from a church in Brisbane. They said, would you like to come preach over here? I said, I need to pray about this. He said, yes. I got to go take my family to Australia. I got to go scuba diving with my daughter at the Great Barrier Reef. It was incredible. During World War II, some of the reef was destroyed by ships and anchors and bombs and stuff like that. So the environmentalist wackos went out there to see how fast it grows back. They watched it grow for 20 years. <laughs> it was a government project. <laughs> Based on a 20-year study of the Great Barrier Reef, they said it's less than 4,200 years old. That's interesting. But I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have a bigger reef someplace? Why is the biggest reef less than 4,200 years old? Well, I have a theory about that. I bet you know what it is, don't you? You can figure it out. Okay. Here's a picture of Niagara Falls. I was just up there last week, actually, at Niagara Falls. The textbook says, boys and girls, the rocky ledge above Niagara Falls has been eroding for 9,900 years. How do they know that? Well, the water goes over the edge and it breaks off the rocks and the waterfall is moving backwards. All waterfalls do this, okay? It's eroding backwards. Actually, the museum guide tells us it's eroding backwards 4.7 feet a year. It was until they diverted most of the water for hydroelectric power. Now they can actually shut off the falls if they want, <laughs> change the water to a new channel. But up until about the 1930s, 4.7 feet a year. Hmm. Charles Lyell went there in 1841 and said, Boy, the Niagara Falls is way back there. It obviously used to be up here. Niagara Falls is moving back down that gully. Pretty obvious to anybody. That gully's uh, four or uh, seven miles long. Now, Lyle said it's 10,000 years to erode all that. Later, he changed it to 35,000 years. The people who lived there said, Charlie, uh, it erodes a whole lot faster than that. Now, Charles Lyle's the guy that wrote this book right here, Principles of Geology. Charles Lyell did not like the Bible at all. He was looking for some way to discredit the Bible. This is the book that destroyed Darwin's faith, by the way. We get into a whole lot more of that on video number four about Charles Lyell's book. But he, he made up these numbers purposely to try to discredit the Bible. He knew, though, that Niagara Falls put a time limit. There was a limit to how long it could have been eroding. It runs over the falls into the gully, seven miles long. This textbook says it took seven, seven and a half miles. It took uh, 9,900 years to make that. Oh, I don't think it's quite that simple. See, Niagara Falls is right there. It used to be further north. It's eroding south. Well, if the earth is millions of years old, why hasn't it eroded back to Lake Erie by now? Why is Niagara Falls right there? Well, I have a theory about that. Now, here's my theory. I believe... About 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. As the flood water was running off, whoosh, about half of that gully washed out in 20 minutes because you had lots more water and soft rock. Hadn't hardened yet, remember, from the flood? It erodes much quicker when it's soft. So it might look like it took 9,900 years. No, they forgot the flood. They also forgot to get their numbers right. It should have been 8,400 had they used the right divider, but oh well. Public school textbook, what do you expect? Uh, you know, when it rains, 30% of the water runs into the ocean, bringing with it mineral salts. The oceans are getting saltier every day. Today, they're 3.6% salt. They could have done that in a few thousand years. So the question would be, if the oceans are millions of years old, why aren't they saltier like the Great Salt Lake, the Dead Sea, Salton Sea? Mm -hmm. Why only 3.6%? One atheist I debated one time said, Hoven, if you believe that flood, would you please tell me how the, uh, how the freshwater fish survived the flood? I said, well, sir, aren't you assuming the flood was salt water? He said, the ocean is salt water. I said, well, yeah, it is today. But I suspect during the flood, it was mostly 